All right, so gladiators and Roman intrigue. Who doesn't love a good Colosseum throwdown? But hold on, we're not revisiting Maximus's glory days. Not this time, we're going deeper. Think uh, under the Colosseum, into those shadowy tunnels with whispers of Ridley Scott's Gladiator II echoing all around us. Fresh from the source, too. Yeah, a sequel after, what is it, like 20 years, the original Gladiator yeah. was huge. So this this is like that moment after the earthquake, dust settling, yeah. you get a first look at what's left. And judging by the chatter, it seems like a pretty dramatic landscape. Ridley Scott's back in the director's seat, obviously, Paul Mescal strapping on the sandals as Lucius, and November 22nd, mark your calendars, folks, but here's the real kicker. We've got our hands on those early pre-review reactions, like straight from the Emperor's box whispers. Ooh, those privileged few, getting the sneak peek before the lions are even loose. And the big question everyone's got is, can Gladiator II escape that shadow? You know, be its own epic or just be riding on the original's chariot tail? And those whispers. Definitely a mixed bag, I gotta say. You got some folks already calling it a masterpiece, best movie ever. Can you believe that? Huh. The early bird hype is real, right? You always got those super fans that get swept up, especially for a film tied to something so beloved. Then other side of the arena, you got folks pumping the brakes a bit. Good, they say, but it doesn't quite reach the heights of the original. Some even saying it felt, I don't know, emotionally flat. But then there's this one, absolute sicko shit. Like, what does that even mean? Knowing these types of films probably translates to some next level brutal action. We gotta remember, early reactions, it's all over the map. You got the diehards, the skeptics, everyone and their opinions. Less about everyone agreeing, more about sensing the film's, what's, what's the word? Potential impact. Impact, sure, but what about Oscar impact? Multiple sources call out Denzel Washington's performance. Denzel feasts, one said. Another, show-stopping, Machiavellian, straight-up Shakespearean. Some even calling it one of his most iconic. This isn't just praise, this is practically a pre-engraving on that little gold statue. Right. And wouldn't be his first rodeo either. Think about it, Oscar voters, they love a good villain. Something about embracing that darkness just captivates. Javier Bardem, no country for old man. Waltz in Inglorious Bastards. Not just performances, those were villain masterclasses. Award magnets. So Denzel's potentially entering that Hall of Fame for baddies then? Oh, um, one source even said, Denzel Washington chews up the scenery. Looks like he's having a blast doing it. Makes you wonder, did they build those Roman sets just for him to unleash on? It's like that world, all that grandeur, ruthlessness. It demands a certain type of acting, huh? big, bold, or you get lost in the shuffle. And if anyone can stand tall in that arena, it's Denzel, no doubt. Yeah. But got to give credit where it's due. He's not the only one facing a Herculean task here. Paul Mescal stepping into those sandals after Russell Crowe. Talk about pressure. Yeah, sequels struggle with that. The weight of iconic roles. Yeah. Will people buy Mescal as their new hero? Some say he shines, calling him a great action star. So there's that. Interesting, because this is his first big action flick, right? He's coming from that indie grit world. Those were all performances, like an after sun, total gear shift. Exactly. And that's what makes these reactions so interesting, right? Yeah. Will people expecting Maximus 2.0 be let down? Or did Mescal pull it off, brought something new, you know, him to the role? Guess we'll see. Ugh, the anticipation is killing me. Though, sticking with Mescal for a sec, one source said, and I quote, Paul Mescal is a great action star without sacrificing his indie grit. Could that be the secret sauce of Gladiator to second? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? Yeah. Did Ridley Scott find that balance? The blockbuster spectacle, but also that nuanced character stuff you get in those smaller films. Tough needle to thread. Makes you wonder, with all the buzz on Denzel, on Ridley Scott doing his Roman thing again, maybe it's Mescal who really surprises us. Dark Horse and all that. Wouldn't that be something? Stepping into the arena with such huge expectations and not just surviving, but owning it. Love that kind of underdog story. Talk about a Coliseum worthy upset, right? <laughs> Speaking of, we got to talk about that one whisper. Someone mentioned a what's next tease at the end. What if Gladiator the Second isn't just a sequel, but kicks off a whole saga? Whoa, no, that's a thought, isn't it? Prequels, spinoffs, yeah. a whole Gladiator cinematic universe. Like, are we going full Marvel in ancient Rome? The possibilities. And if that's true, then these are early reactions. This is just the opening battle cry, the first swing of the sword in a much bigger fight. So we got to stay sharp, right? Us pop culture gladiators, I mean. Pay attention to those little details, the comparisons, all those whispers coming from the stands. Absolutely. Don't just take these reactions at face value. Think about them. Engage. Debate. This is bigger than one movie this is about. Whoa, hold up a second. Getting ahead of ourselves here. 
Before we predict the future of the Roman Empire, at least the movie version, we got to address the elephant in the room, or should I say the emperor in the forum. Yeah, you said we can't talk Gladiator the second without thinking about the original, right? <laughs> and not just the film itself, but Joaquin Phoenix, his Commodus. Oscar-winning, scenery-chewing, tough act to follow. He set the bar H-I-G-H for unhinged Roman emperors, that's for sure. And now Denzel's stepping into those togas, bringing his own brand of intensity. It's going to be interesting to see who owns that villain space more, you know? That's like those sets, those costumes. They demand a certain presence. You got to go big or go home, right? Yeah. No room for shrinking violets in the Roman Empire. And if there's one thing Denzel doesn't do, it's shrink. <laughs> but legacies, right. Speaking of, Paul Mescal, he's got some seriously big sandals to fill following Russell Crowe. Some of those early reactions, a little unsure about him. One said, not as captivating as Crowe. Ouch. Yeah, people get attached to the original, can't blame them. Yeah. But this isn't just a remake, right? Yeah. New story, new emperor, new everything. Got to judge it on its own merits. True, true. Which is what makes all this pre-release buzz so interesting. Are we in for straight up swords and sandals, or is there more to it? One source called it, get this, a Shakespearean tale of hope, futility, and power within a crumbling system. Whoa. Now that's intriguing. Hints at some deeper themes you don't always see in these action epics. Makes you think about those comparisons people are throwing around. Godfather Part 2. Even the Dark Knight. Big shoes to fill. Those are huge 80 comparisons. That's it's too early to say if it's justified. Probably. But it does show you the ambition here. This isn't just Gladiator 1.5. They're swinging for the fences. No doubt. And let's be real, this is Ridley Scott. The man knows spectacle. Sources are raving about the action, the visuals, epic, stunning, pulsating. One even said visually stunning. I mean, come on, it's going to be a visual feast. He's the master of visual storytelling, right? Puts you right there in the action. But here's the question. Can spectacle alone carry a whole movie? Does Gladiator II have that heart, that emotional core to make it truly great? Right, because we've all seen them. Big, beautiful flops. All flash, new substance. But wait, weren't there some comparisons to Black Hawk Down? Someone said, best since Black Hawk Down. That's a different ballgame. You're right, there were. And that's interesting because Black Hawk Down, yeah, it was visually stunning, but it was also praised for that raw, gritty realism. It had heart. So is this a return to form for Ridley Scott then? Back to that kind of filmmaking. Visually amazing, A&D, a great story. That's the million dollar question. Especially looking at his, shall we say, diverse filmography. Mm -hmm. For every Blade Runner or Alien, you've got a Robin Hood or Exodus, Gods and Kings. Yeah, some of those were not his best work. Let's just say his career has been a mix of triumphs and uh, learning experiences. So gladiator metaphor time. Thumbs up and thumbs down for gladiator second. <laughs> Triumphant return to the arena for Ridley Scott, or does it stumble? It's a total nail biter, right? But Gladiator's got to get back to the arena. We talk legacy, the look of the film, the themes, but there's this one thing, kind of random, but it stuck with me from these early reactions. Oh, yeah. What's that? Denzel's wardrobe. His earrings, specifically. His earrings. Okay. Yeah, one person said they were hypnotizing like they steal the show. Apparently, Denzel's character is rocking some serious bling. Well, historically speaking, fashion was huge, right? Yeah. Especially for those in power. Mm -hmm. Projecting an image, early branding, I guess you could say. And no one does powerful like Denzel. But it gets better. Ready? The same source, they said his performance as Macrinus is, quote, one of his most charismatic and riveting. Even comparing it to Training Day, which, hello, Oscar winner. Oh, those are some fighting words. Yeah. And they're not wrong, Denzel, in Training Day electrifying to hear he's bringing that same energy to gladiator to psycho man right especially with all this talk about him being a contender for awards season and remember earlier we were saying how villain roles tend to do well at the oscars totally a well-written bad guy there's just something about them that grabs you the complexity the going against the grain it's award bait almost so let's break it down we've got denzel potentially iconic role playing a seriously compelling villain in a movie already generating buzz like crazy yeah, I'd say an Oscar nomination isn't just likely, it's practically a given at this point. And that makes you wonder, where does this leave Paul Mescal? Talk about a baptism by fire. Going up against Denzel during awards season, that's a whole other arena. Gladiators round two. That's what makes Gladiator this second so fascinating even now, right? You've got the heavy hitters, Scott, Washington, but then you've got Mescal who could... You never know. Steal the whole show. Love that kind of wild card energy. For real. It's like a whole other gladiator fight, but with acting. And to think, we've gotten all this from just some early buzz. What else is Gladiator a second hiding? What other surprises are in store? That's the best part, isn't it?
the guessing, the hype, the possibility it'll be even bigger than we thought. Or it'll fall flat on its face. Come on, it's Ridley Scott. We gotta acknowledge that possibility. Yeah. Remember Exodus, Gods and Kings. Right, right. Point taken. But for now, let's enjoy the mystery. Let those early reactions fuel the fire, you know? Let the hype train roll on. Here, here, because here's the thing. Hit or miss, Gladiator 3, it's going to be a ride. Oh, absolutely. And that's what we want, right? Yeah. A film that stays with you, that gets people talking, that reminds you why you love movies in the first place. Couldn't have said it better myself. Mm. And there you have it, folks, our deep dive into Gladiator 2 at. We covered the highs, the lows, the maybe it'll win an Oscar, even Denzel's taste in jewelry. And most importantly, we've got way more questions than answers, which, good news, we should have answers soon. Until then, eyes peeled, folks. The games are just getting started.